Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Mara Thompson. New tonight at 6, a Benzie County father is behind bars tonight charged with seven counts of criminal sexual conduct. As you can imagine, being a small school with less than 300 students, losing Dylan is being felt immensely by every student and staff member. But because it's such a tight-knit community, everyone is also stepping in to get through this difficult time together. Mara, did he say anything? Mark, not much other than it's been a long 20 months. This was the first time Menor stepped out of jail since his September 2016 arrest. Since voter turnout was so large today, he's still hopeful that those numbers could turn around and says at the end of the day, he just thinks it's important how many people made it to the polls. One of the great things about Narcan is it's so easy to use. Anyone can do it. Even I just learned in a few seconds, but Purdue Pharma has yet to say exactly how the new drug will be administered. The Benzie County Road Commission recently received a list from the Michigan Department of Transportation about areas within the county that may be unsafe and need improvements. Surprisingly, this intersection did not make the list. Good morning, Jessica. Yes, despite it being snowing and freezing and also 7 in the morning, there is no lack of enthusiasm and excitement here from all of the Western Michigan University students here. I don't know if you can see kind of the line behind me in the crowd. Obviously, I've got these lovely people next to me, but there are hundreds of people here. These poll stations have been installed in every classroom and in the hallways here at Glen Lake. They work just like a fire alarm. Pull it down and the alarm is sounded and police will be on their way. There wasn't a day that went by that Alex didn't say I love you mom. Yep. Alex Grizel grew up in Traverse City. A former West hockey player, he was an energetic, fun-loving person. But in October of last year at 23 years old, he lost his battle with addiction. He didn't wake up saying I'm going to be an alcoholic or a heroin addict or an addict of any kind. Um, he was going to be an addict of life and change the world and be a great hockey player. She says what started with chewing tobacco and alcohol became a slippery slope. Did you see that change in him? I absolutely did. Um, I, and I certainly didn't realize what it was. It was a battle he fought every day. You know, you wake up in the morning, you, you're going to say, I'm not doing this today. I'm going to do this differently, this differently. And um, you can have all the, the thoughts in the world, but um, you're judged on your actions. Addiction, it takes over your life. It takes over your brain. And your brain doesn't know how to think properly without the medication. A 2003 graduate of Traverse City Central, Dana Hendrickson was a proud aunt with a passion for singing. After an ER visit for kidney stones, she too fell victim to opioid addiction. Dana worked every day on recovery, attending NA meetings in her new home of Chicago. She sponsored many young women who live today in recovery, drug free, because of Dana. But after being prescribed opioids following a back surgery, Dana relapsed. To know that she um, could not reach out again because it's they're so tired of disappointing and they want nothing more than to make you proud. Dana hid in isolation, ashamed, but she claimed she was doing great, even reiterating that through a text with her mom just two days before her overdose. If you think someone maybe is isolating or not doing well, don't just listen to the phone call or read the text. Go see them and educate yourself as a parent. Nancy and Anne could see how badly their children wanted recovery, but it's an uphill battle, especially when shame gets in the way. And that brain remembers very well that addiction and addiction is a very loud voice. Um, you know, you have the, the angel on one side and, and the devil on the other and that, that, that angel is just a whisper and the, the addiction is a screamer. They say fighting this epidemic now must be a community effort. Educate yourself even if you haven't been affected and resources need to be available for those who are still fighting. We don't have the answers to how to fix everything because it's bigger than what Ann and I can do. It's way bigger, but there's people in power that can start to make a difference. And that's all I want to do is change someone's direction, change a path so that one mom doesn't have to feel the way I do. One sister doesn't have to be without her 
best friend and brother, and my husband doesn't have to be without his son and his work partner. There's always hope. There's, oh. there's always a little bit of hope that it can be turned around. Decades after giving everything to serve our country, dozens of mid-Michigan veterans had the experience of a lifetime seeing the memorials in their honor. All in about 12 hours from Grand Rapids to Washington, D.C. and back, starting with a warm welcome. Thank you to them. Our world is different because they keep, were willing to give their life and their time. For World War II veteran Stanley Switalski of Gaylord, the day had an added surprise when many family members flew in to join him. It means a lot. He doesn't go very many places, and to have him come here to the World War II uh, memorial is pretty cool. It's very cool. For all, it was emotional in its own ways. Uh, I've, I've seen this before, but this is something special. I've, I've got my son here with me now. From the wall at the Vietnam War Memorial. They gave it all. Well, I, I just gave my service. I know it was necessary, but I'm not jealous of them, but uh, I feel I'm not worthy to be considered with them. To the changing of the guards at Arlington National Cemetery. It was a day of healing for the veterans. The people in there as you go by, they shake your hand and thank you for your service. And it's been kind of emotional for me. A way to give our gratitude. Very rewarding to know that somebody really thought something of what we did for years and years. I'd meet people on the street and they wouldn't say anything to me at all, even though I was still wearing my cap. But now I've had people come in a restaurant and search for me and buy my lunch. And Thank you for your service. You're welcome. And a day they say they'll never forget. It's beyond my imagination. Beyond my imagination. This is my dream job. Zach Updike is in his first semester with Youth Work, where he spends about 20 hours a week getting experience working for nonprofits around northern Michigan, such as the DNR. When we get done doing this, we're going to stay in the table. It started in February 2018 and has continued to grow, with 110 kids being involved so far. Probably about 40% of the young people that are in our program are in the foster care system or have aged out of the foster care system. And then others come from varying backgrounds that, that um, we try to, to help and, and serve. Those involved are AmeriCorps members, so they get a wage along with educational stipends and mentorship. We're helping our local uh, industries and companies and businesses here to find, you know, uh, high quality candidates for employment later. Building trails, planting trees and historic preservation are just some of the projects they accomplish each semester. Those crews will perform about 10,000 hours of free or pro bono services for area nonprofits and other organizations. For the kids. Hey Cody, I need you to go grab some more wood. It's better than any old job. <laughs> All I really have to do now is stand and wait for him. And I like doing something different other than a routine, doing the same thing. It gets boring, so I like doing this because it's something new. All while helping create a community everyone can enjoy. And it also gives them a sense of pride, like they own this. This is something that they're a part of. In Grand Traverse County, Mara Thompson, 7 and 4 News.